All right, guys. Man, 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 man. There's a lot going on around the world. We're trying to keep everything confused, confused, chaotic. That's of the devil. God's deep, decent, orderly. That's how he rolls. He told us to do everything with decency and in order. And uh, the world's not like that, right? It's a chaotic, loud place. And we're to study to be quiet, be part of the quiet crowd. You know, the Holy Spirit, he speaks softly. He, uh, that's why we got to shut the noise out to hear him speak to us. Because he wants to tell us things, man. He, he wants us to know his heart. He wants us to uh, get every blessing, get every reward, award, crown. He wants us to get it all. Because he, you guys remember uh, Hadessa? Before her name was changed to Esther, she had a uh, chamberlain who took really good care of her. And his only job was to make her queenly and to make her the best in the eyes of the bridegroom. And that's what the Holy Spirit's doing to us. He's wanting to groom us and train us and shape us into everything that's perfected in Christ Jesus, perfected in the word, perfected in glory, perfected in obedience, perfected in love. Uh, God's love for us and us realizing how deeply and wonderfully he's loved us and we love him back. That's what this whole life is all about, is finding that out. And it's sad to see that much to most of the church does not love him back. They don't love him back. They uh, are appreciative, it seems, uh, they say, they're appreciative of the fact that he's died for them and he's made a way for them to go to heaven. And he's made a way for everybody to go to heaven. You, you must be assured, you must rest assured that you're going to heaven when you die. Do you know that? Jesus made it possible he gave us his Bible. That's the reason Jesus came, so we would know that we have eternal life and that this eternal life is in him and him alone, the Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Jesus Christ of heaven. And he who knew no sin left heaven and came down here and still did no sin. But on the cross, he became our sin, and that's why he was judged so fiercely, so terribly uh, at the hand of the Father. Because it was your sin being judged on him. And he traded places with us. He took our sin so you and I could take his righteousness upon us if you believe. Will you believe the story we're telling you right now? That God left heaven, came here, lived perfectly for 33 and a half years, died on a cross for you. And while he was on that cross, all your sin was placed on him and nailed to that cross with him. And God burnt him out as a burnt sacrifice in our place, your place. And because of his death, burial, and resurrection, you can now go to heaven if you'll believe that. Will you please believe that? It's as simple as that. No works, nothing to do on your part, no church attendance, no baptism, no catechism, no cracker eating, no confess, confessing to a pedophile drunk. You don't have to do any of that. You just believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And if you'll believe, you shall not perish in hell, but you will have everlasting life in heaven. Woo! Glory to God, man! I'm excited about that. That's the only way I could be saved. I because I couldn't keep me saved. I couldn't get me saved. I'm in desperate need of a Savior, and Jesus Christ is the only one qualified, and he's the only one who did it, and he has completed and perfected salvation, and all you got to do is believe that. Will you please believe that and go to heaven with us here shortly? All the children will be going. God's going to rapture. Uh, the word rapture is God's evacuation plan, his salvation plan physical salvation. He's going to save us from this earth, boom, take us to heaven, and then he's going to judge this earth. In righteousness, he doth judge and make war. And he will be furious at the inhabitants of this earth who have loved this earth, the ways of the earth, everything else. And God has called us to get away from that. Love not this world, neither the things that are in this world. If any man loves this world, it's guaranteed that God's love is not in you. You don't understand him. Can't imagine living in this wicked world without knowing I'm saved. Amen. A peace that this world cannot know. All oh, glory and honor to Jesus for his perfect sacrifice in my place. Amen. Josh, he's on it, man. 75 days left, family. We only have 75 more days left in the year. God's calendar year. The Bible code calendar. The Stellarium calendar. 75 days. It's the good news because we can't earn it with our filthy rags. Uh, and what she's referring to there is our filthy rags are our goodness, the best that we have to offer God. Look here, God, look what I got.
to him, it's disgusting, filthy, leprous, pus-filled rags. So you can't offer him yourself and think you can be saved. You got to bring your filthy self to him in belief and say, Lord, I know you want to cleanse me and made me whole. You've done everything possible to save me. You started it and you said you finished it. And now it's up to me to believe that. Do I believe that you started and completed salvation's work through your death, burial, and resurrection? Yes! If you truly believe that, you're saved. If you don't, all you are is pussy, filthy, nasty, leprous, disgusting rags to God. Watched State of the Union last night. Bless your heart, Rex. Oh, bless your heart, dude. Uh, Woohoo! 75 days left. That's what we got. That's what we got. That was something else. They have brought in 12-foot steel fences all the way around the Capitol building for that. And they have put a 1,000 warriors in New York City for the subways. And now Philadelphia is requesting a bunch of soldiers there. What? Yeah, you heard me. Philly. What's so big about Philly? Well, we're the Church of Philadelphia, and it's supposed to be a city of brotherly love, and Philadelphia is not that. They have the biggest drug infestation of any place on planet Earth, and they supply them with needles and drugs and everything else. And you can go in there and see them people on fentanyl, and you can see them on all those other drugs, standing up, just nodding out. Zombies, man. Demon-possessed zombies. And that's supposed to be Philadelphia. What else about Philadelphia? On the 6th and the 7th of April is coming the big WrestleMania. Two-day event. And The Rock and his tag team buddy will be squaring off with the American Nightmare and his tag team buddy. The first night. And then it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one the second night. Last night in Dallas, Texas, you know, where the fire is just burning the place down and killing all the, all the animals, the deer, the wild hogs, and all the uh, domesticated cattle, ranched cattle, killing everything inside. These guys are down there hooping and hollering over the rock being there. Paid big money, sold out crowd in Dallas, Texas. And uh, the zombie drugs, that's it. God bless everyone here. You too, Kush. They should call it the state of delusion. Yeah, lies, lies, lies. Everything's a lie. Not one truth being spoken there. That's where the devil gets glory, honor, laud, praise. And you and I, whew, we stay over there and we come on over here to the truthful Bible study. Why don't we just speak truth for, you know, the whole time? God loves that. Amen. Lila, blessings family. God bless you, sister. Glad to have you with us. Glad to have everybody with us. So last night in Dallas, Texas, when it's time for The Rock and Roman Reigns and all them guys to enter, you know, Roman and all those guys enter the ring, and then The Rock, boom, it goes black, and then he, boom, he hits, he's on the deck, and like, you know, Satan, like lightning falling, and there's 13 lightning flashes with his music going on in the background, and he's dressed in this vest, looks real fiery, like fire itself. And he comes into the ring, does his thing. And right after the 13 lightning strikes, you see three beams of light shoot up. Just like a trident, dude. From the bottom up. Scripted, scripted, scripted. And they're writing the script all the way to Philadelphia. You know, where the United States of America started. Where Benjamin Franklin and all the boys were just constantly writing and signing stuff, documents, and here's America, God bless America. And you know the lie? We started as a lie, a Freemason satanic lie with a Christian, fake Christian, a, a Freemason Jesus facade, not the real Jesus of the Bible. Hope to have these Bible studies when we're in the kingdom of heaven. That's all we get, baby. Praise God. Walk in Bible. We're going to see. We're, that's Adam. Adam's over there and Eve. Abel, you won't find Cain here. Yeah. All right. Uh, Seth, he's our papa. Adam's our papa. Seth's our papa. Enoch, she goes all the way down. Why, there's Methuselah. There's Enoch. There's Lamech. There's Noah. And it's going to be walking Bible time up in Jesus' land. We're going to love it, ain't we? Hey, please make the Bible your everything now and love it. Okay? Get caught up in your maturity there. 
That's the way it's going to be in heaven. Why don't you live that life here in faith? God admires faith. He rewards faith. He awards faith. The just shall live by his faith. That means by reading the Bible and just believing it and doing what it says. That's how the justified man lives. How does a man become justified? By believing in the finished work of Jesus Christ, what we mentioned earlier. His death, burial, and resurrection. Belief only. And don't you dare think that you're going to add some spiritual, mighty, holy work there to prove to God how, how much you believe him. That will nullify your belief. That nullifies salvation. That is not salvation. Grace plus works. It's grace alone plus nothing. This is Jesus, and I believe that he started and finished it. That better be your salvation. Once saved, always save salvation. If it's not, you're lost as hell, going to hell. And we don't want that. That's why we're here every night warning you, telling you the truth, the simplicity of the gospel, and then we want to grow you deeply into the heights of maturity. Okay? We want you to grow. Read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day. Pray every day, read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. And you'll grow, grow, grow. And you'll grow, grow, grow. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. That's what we want for you. Amen? All right. You know, we got some cool Bible codes that Sean has put together. It's a continuation of Revelation chapter 11. You guys want to get some fresh manna? I do. That's why I showed up tonight was for these Bible codes, man. Heather, oh, yeah. It's a good thing we will be made wholly righteous. Otherwise, I might have some words with Adam and Eve. No kidding. There is a Bible code about hell that says, warn everyone. Amen. That's what we're doing. Praise God. Thank you for that reminder, Alicia. Just keep those apples away from Eve, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't we just keep the devil away from Eve? Okay, and I think there's a good chance of that in heaven. Hello? Amen. All right, Eve's our mama, y'all. Eve's our mama. All right, where are you at? Let's open these up. These are awesome, guys. These are awesome. I'm going to open this up so we can follow along and see the pictures of these awesome codes that he did. Bam, bam, bam. Okay, here's the first one. So we got the rock with 13 lightning strikes, guys. He is the devil. He is the devil portraying the devil. Okay, that's the first one we're looking at tonight. Now remember, every one of these we're doing is from Revelation 11. What's so special about that? That is the chapter that talks about the two witnesses, the lampstands. Amen, the olive trees. Praise God. So this will be the first one. Tyvon says, hey, y'all, fresh manna. You got it, dude. We're hitting it right now, man. All these are from Revelation 11. Here we go. This is the first one at an ELS of 619, 619. Here's what it says. Yeshua to call out to you. He snatches away. Now, that's beautiful for us in chapter 4, 1. Here in chapter 11, it's after Sean has been killed and then reconstructed, his head's put back on his body. He's no longer stinky from decomposition, and he's called away. Remember, right there in that passage, the Lord says, come up hither. And he has his rapture. Right here at that ELS of 619, Yeshua to call out to you, he snatches away. And then that green line you saw going through there is Revelation. Of course, it's all Revelation 11. This happens to be verse 2. And they heard a great voice from heaven which said to them, Come up hither. And that blue line is, Sean lives. A sign. So it's going to be a massive sign to the Jews. This guy was right. Everything he said is true. He is the guy from chapter 11. Obama and the Pope and everybody kept saying they weren't. These guys are liars. They're not the two prophets. We were the great prophets. We're the great guys bringing you victory right here in Rome, uh, right here in Jerusalem. We're the ones in Jerusalem. We're the good guys. And Sean and that other guy are the bad guys. And they're going to be telling them that the whole time. They are in opposition to us and we're good. They are bad. And then they get killed. See, we told you so. They're the bad ones. The good guy's st still alive. We're still great here. Blah, blah, blah. Gifts, party, everybody. For three and a half days. 
while their dead bodies lie in the street. And then all of a sudden their heads reattached, their decomposition goes away, the glory of God shines through, that everybody hears a voice, come up hither. And they rise, they resurrect, they are boom, raptured right in front of everybody. Now that's a sign to tell everybody, okay, Obama and that other guy's been lying the whole time. And Sean told us, the Bible told us, and Sean told us in the plain text, uh, are the coded text and his own preaching down here for the last three and a half years not to get this mark. And these guys are wanting us to get the mark. So guess what? Obama and the Pope are the bad guys. And Sean and the other guy are the good guys. We're believing them. Run. Run! And they're going to run. Because his resurrection is a sign. The final sign while he's here. He might be, t he might be here preaching to them. Now you also watch for this, watch for that, watch for this. But the, the obedient Jews will be in hiding. At that time, when right after, right around the time Sean gets resurrected from the dead, killed and raises from the dead, uh, sorry, bro, typo. That should say verse 12. Okay, okay, not verse 2, verse 12. Uh, chapter 11 has only 19 verses, guys. It's going to be one of the 19. Amen? So it's verse 12. This is verse 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven which said to them, Come up hither. And boom, they come up hither. And Sean lives. A sign, a sign straight from our Lord God. Amen. Because God's all about life. He's all about afterlife. He's all about resurrection and rapture. And these idiots, these fools all over the place who poo-poo the rapture, you are the biggest fool retard you ever met. It's coming, it's coming God's way. It's a spring, summer rapture. Shavuot. Alul. Singing the song of Alul. You guys know what Alul means. God never said that the sixth month was a lul. A lul is an acrostic from the Song of Solomon, which my beloved is mine and I am his. <laughs> it's a rapture thing. A lul is rapture. So we get all these clues. A lul rapture. We're going to be singing the song of a lul. We're going to be teaching the song of a lul. It's going to be, you know, blah, 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 summer, spring, summer. Right now, get ready. On your mark. Because God's all about life, afterlife, resurrection, and rapture. And we're about to see it. We're going to see it corporately. And then Sean and the other guy will see it as a couple. And then we see chapter 14, the 144,000 are up on the holy mount with the Lord Jesus Christ with the mark of God in their hand as first fruits who are sent away, preserved. So that's exciting. Amen. Hallelujah. Jehovah is so good. Boy, he is. That's all he is, guys, 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 guys. If you have any other inkling in your heart, and your mind, you've been conned, you've been lied to, you've believed a lie, you've embraced it, that God is bad and he wants to withhold, you got the wrong God, man. You're talking about Satan. You have applied to God the personality, the characteristics of the devil. Because our God's good. He's a giver. He's grace, 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 grace. Blessing us where we don't deserve blessing. When I've purposely made the wrong decision, he'll still... Bless me in the middle of that in spite of me and keep me from harming myself, hurting myself over and over. He's done this. But why should we continue in sin that so he can just keep doing that? That's what Paul asked. And here's what it says about that. God forbids that kind of thinking that you would go on and sin. So just because God keeps helping you land on your feet like an old cat. God forbids that thinking. Why don't you learn to fall in love with him as he has loved you? Receive his grace, his free gifts, his gifts of bounty when you don't deserve it, and his keeping you from getting what you do deserve. Why don't you recognize that and in wisdom wake up to that and say, oh, Lord, you've been so good to me. Please help me to be good to you. Help me to follow you. Help me to love you. And this is only for Christians. Nobody can follow Jesus unless you're saved, unless you're born again. He, he will have nothing to do with you and your pussy, filthy, nasty rags down there in the hog pen of sin. Okay, you got to get saved. Jesus is taking care of all of our sin issue. Your sin's not the issue. It's your belief in the fact that he's taken care of it and only he can save you and nobody else. You must believe this. You must believe what the preacher's preaching. Alul, I remember an extra day was added. 30, 30. That's why the Lord kept pointing to 629, 629, 629, 629. And boom, what? There's supposed to be a 30 there too. What? Boy, we added 30 to the calendar and it made all the days clickety-clack right in place. Isn't that wonderful, man? Tyvon says, the grace of God always will be free and everlasting. Grace means gift, guys. Amen. All right. 
So let's look at another one. That was the skip at 619. Yeshua to call out to you. He snatches away. Come up hither. Sean lives a sign. All right, let's look at the next one. Let me open this dude up again. Boom. This is the next one. Check it out. Hey, a couple good terms in there. Bam, bam, bam. Bam, bam, bam. All right, let's check this out. <clears throat> this is a negative skip. That means rapture going in the angle of up. Rapture. And guess what the skip is? 444. You know, Sean. You know, the book. 444. Negative. 444. And here's what God says. Precise signs from Yeshua. Precise signs from Jesus, man. Let's see what else is there. The brown, Sean. Blue, Moses. Pink, Elijah. Blue, the fear, the awe. All right, let's read that again smoothly without the color coding. The ELS, the skip, equidistant letter skips, right here in one chapter. This is Revelation 11. Precise signs from Yeshua. Sean, Moses, Elijah, the fear and awe. And the green verse is verse 5 of chapter 11 of Revelation. Fire proceedeth out of them, their mouth and devoureth their enemies. <clears throat> it's going to be quite the sign, right? God's all about sign. The Jews require a sign. You want to see a sign? Here you go, man. And when these guys toast their enemies, <laughs> kill them like fire-breathing dragons... That's why Obama's going to be saying they're the fire-breathing dragon. They're the bad guy. They're the red dragon of Revelation 13. And Sean's going to be like, no, man, all this was in Revelation 11. All these signs, all these verses, this is Revelation 11. 11, guys, a one and a one represents the Gemini twins. Sean and the other guy, Moses and Elijah, God's men, his chosen. Amen. And Sean's got a cool note here. He says, Revelation 11, okay? It starts at letter. Now, remember, the whole New Testament is one word in Aramaic. And uh, I propose Mimi's birthday. <laughs> yeah, May 18. Be a good watch night. Right on. Maybe 321, Sean's mama. Yeah, th uh, the 18th. That's cool. That's supposed to be the day, the 40-day count from the eclipse is May 18, day 40. And uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure something out the closer we get, man. If the Lord gives us a code or something, we'll be like, okay, I'm, I'm staying up. Praise God. Er, er, I'm staying up every day. I mean, come on, man. Adar's coming. Adar 2. Adar 2 is what's got us going, and I'm so glad Josh is keeping us on line, keeping us in line, on time. Revelation chapter 11, guys, starts at letter 444-958, okay? In this chain of characters from Matthew 1-1 all the way... Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1st, 2nd, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st, Thessalonians, 1st, 2nd, Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st, 2nd, Peter, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, John, Jude, and Revelation, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 19, 11. At Revelation chapter 11, verse 1, it starts at letter 444-958. What? Yeah, that's something kind of cool to note. These two guys... One of them, Sean, who's identified as the 444. This book is identified as the 444. Hello? I say hello. When you, uh, you know, Bible code's unsealed, and when you see his, when you see his um, link up there for Sean Mitchell, you're going to see that 444 in there. Right here. And God starts Revelation 11 at number 444-958. I think that's pretty cool. Don't you? Thank you, Josh. 
Seeing the countdown keeps me excited. Encourage me too. Me too. Rick says, Adar's on the radar. Amen. That's the way I see it too. I think, look at this guys. If you can see this, this is what it looks like on Sean's Bible code software. Do you see that? Revelation chapter 11, 444958. And then it ends at 446, and I can't read it backwards there. 446, uh, let's blow that dude up, see if we can see it. Bam. Uh, 446391. Boom, you guys saw it in your direction, I hope. So he gives us that sign too. And that that's when he's working on Code Finder, that's what it looks like. He he can find all sorts of notes and interesting tidbits and facts to keep him in line and let him know where he is. Amen. I, I love that program. I love that Code Finder, man. Brother Roy and him put that together and I, I just praise God for it. I discovered this idiot, uh, Kush turned me onto this idiot today, this Bible code guy, and he's one of Code Searcher's false apostles, his false disciple, writing all kinds of crap. Hate Jesus, hate rapture, hate everything, and the way they're going to enter into the kingdom is by being good little boys and girls with their filthy rags that we just talked about. So deceived, so wicked, and they're using the Bible codes, and they're using Code Finder to find their false codes. They're, they can't be led of the Spirit, guys. Then Sean showed me another guy, another idiot, who uh, showed codes till about three years ago. He just couldn't keep up, man. The, the devils inside him just couldn't deal with it anymore. Okay, and he just quit making these codes because he, he was making false codes and about false salvation and just wickedness on Code Finder. Okay, you can make false codes on Code Finder, and everybody else who's not wearing the ephod most certainly will be making false ones. Those that haven't been called for the last 10 years to do it, I know one guy, Sean Mitchell. And this guy, Sean said he would go to um, Google Translate, finding Hebrew words, this is how, they, and trusting Google Translate over what the Bible is saying, over, over uh, everyday speech of Hebrew going to Google Translate to find the next code and the next term, totally getting it all wrong. You better not trust in Google Translate when you're making your false codes there, kids. You better, he says, yeah, I, I don't know how to speak Hebrew, so I just go to Google Translate. You idiots, man. I am telling you, we have told you to stay away from the Bible code. We've told you there's only one guy qualified to wear that ephod and you stay away from it. You have nothing to do with it. You're going to open Pandora's box. You're going to open up a bunch of devils in your soul, in your house, in your thinking, in your mind, because we told you to stay away from it, and you didn't because you're so proud. Your head is hard. Your neck is stiff, and you know more, and you have no idea at the, at the growth of jealousies and envies in your soul and in your spirit. Saul didn't. He didn't recognize any of that. He just kept throwing spears at folk. Calling them sons of bitches. He called his own son that. You son of a something rebellious woman. You, you, you son of a something and rebellious woman. He was calling his son that through his jealousies and angers and his, un, his uh, inability to hear God's voice, know God's voice, understand what God was up to in God's calling. And his jealousies and his enragings and his envies and strifes just overtook him because he was in a place where he shouldn't have been. Usurping God, usurping the Lord, and every one of these fools who tries to do Bible codes get it all wrong. I'm going to use Google Translate. What an idiot. This guy ended up saying stuff that was backwards using Google Translate. Amen? Why don't we just let God speak to the guy and let him know what's going on, okay? And trust trust God with that. You're gonna have to trust God with a Bible writer. You know, we, we talked about last night, um, people saying, I, I, I love the Bible, but I don't like the Bible codes. I don't like those seven. Well, let's see here. Uh, I don't like Genesis, Deuteronomy, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Romans, or Revelation. 
<clears throat> I, I don't like that. I, I don't like those seven. <clears throat> now, guys, those seven are pretty powerful. You take away Genesis and Deuteronomy, you take away Moses. Uh, I like some of Moses' writings, not all of Moses' writings. I like most of his writings. I like the three books, but I don't like those other two. I, I don't like Genesis and Deuteronomy. And I, I certainly don't like Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel. Uh, I mean, come on, guys. Those guys just write some funky stuff, mean stuff. God's all meany and furious there and talking about turning the ball, world upside down like a ball and shaking everything that can be shaken, <clears throat> killing folks and Jeremiah and, you know, just snatching Ezekiel up by his hair and having him see all these spaceships and stuff. I, I can't go with that. And certainly Romans. I hate Paul and I hate Grace. I, I don't like Romans. I, I'm going to kick that one out of my Bible because I can't reason it out. Because if I were God, I'd do it differently. And that revelation, oh my goodness. And that's what all the Protestants have done. The Catholics and the Protestants, they hate revelation. They hate Bible prophecy. They hate it all. And for you to hate the Bible code and to re reject the Bible code and to have, I, I like the 66, but not those next seven that's a coming. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. You are a Moses rejecting idiot. You're a Paul rejecting idiot. You're a John rejecting idiot. You're an Isaiah rejecting idiot. You're a Jeremiah rejecting idiot. Because these Bible codes are found in all those books. Those books make the Bible code, make it say what it's saying. You know, giving us the heart of God. Adulterous and rebellious woman. That's it. That's what he said. Calling his mom a whore. Jonathan was Saul's son. And John, and he was so envious and jealous of David, Saul was. And Jonathan was his best friend. He said, where is he? He said, he, he went to go spend some time with his family. And he throws a javelin at him. He says, you son of a, an adulterous, rebellious woman. You son of a whore. About his own wife. Jonathan's own mama. That's what jealousies will do, man. And have you thinking stupid, doing the wrong thing. And that's why we need to stay away from it. And follow the Lord. Just love him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, man. And loving our neighbor is ourself. Amen. All right. Where did that thing go? Every time I blow up. Uh, Sean's pictures on my computer, it takes it to the top of our conversation, which was four years ago, you know? All right. Here we go. Let's find this one here, the very next one. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, and let's go over that again. That last code, that was at a negative 444 going upwards. Precise signs from Yeshua. Sean, Moses, Elijah, and the fear and awe, man. The green verse said... Fire proceedeth out of their mouths and devoureth their enemies. And then we talked about Revelation uh, 11 at uh, 444, 958, that letter. All right. And the ELS, this next one, is at an ELS of 445. We saw 444 going this way. Now we got 445 going this way. Perverse and rebellious woman. Perverse. I mean, dude, she's a pervert. She's an adulteress. She's a kinkmeister. Whatever perverse means, satanic. Your mom's a whore, a devilish whore. You know, that's what refusing the men of God will bring you to, guys, in your mind. If you refuse the true men of God, you're going to end up thinking like Saul, a usurper. You're going to think you know more than the men of God do. And it's never true. The men of God follow the word of God. Amen. All right. Let's see what this one does here. I'm going to show you, show you the next sign. That's this one here. Does it get bigger? Here it is. All right, here's the next one. This is the 445. This is the one coming downward. And it looks like it meets something going up. Or do you see that red and the blue meeting together in the middle? That's going to be incredible. At that skip, let's see what's going on. This is chapter 11, and that green verse will be one of the verses in chapter 11. Let's see what we got. Skip of four, four, five, Yeshua for the timing. How many of y'all believe Yeshua, Jesus, is always on time? The right time, the perfect time, every, every time? Me too. All right. Hey, Mimi thinks it so. All right. The blue says plague or pandemic. The green, now, what was that red and the blue meeting each other? Yeshua for the timing, and the blue is 
the plague or the pandemic. That green verse we saw is verse 6. And to smite the earth with all plagues. What? All in chapter 11, guys. These are all in chapter 11. You had better start believing the Bible code now. You had better start believing God's guy now. You better start believing that Sean is Moses and Elijah now. Thank God it's not too late for you to believe that. You should have believed it a long time ago, but you still can't believe it tonight. And we're praying that these chapter 11 codes and all this stuff concerning Sean and the other guy in these codes, Jesus and his signs in these codes will prove to you that you're an idiot and you need to believe quick. You need to fast track your belief in the truth and the way God is doing things now. And praise God for that. All right. So let's read that again. Skip of 445, the red and the blue meeting each other, saying, Yeshua for the timing and the plague, the timing of the plague and the pandemic, and to smite the earth with all plagues. Hallelujah. All right, let's look at another one, man. I love these. This is so awesome. Okay. Here's the next one. Boom. You can really see that one, huh? We got some red, the main term, the blue, the pink, and the green. Let's see what we're seeing here. This is at a skip of negative 294 going upward, 294. And it says, the red is Satan. Hasatan, Satan. The green, Sean. Blue, ambush. Pink, revenge fire. Smoothly without the color coding. Satan, Sean, ambush, revenge fire. Finally, when Satan comes down at the three and a half year mark, when he's forced to earth, he can't leave earth. He's going to enter Barack Obama's body, and they're finally going to be able to watch the protection of God drop on these two guys. Just like Job, they're shields will be down and they'll be able to be killed and they're going to bring in a drone it sounds like and blow them away they think to hell you're going to blow them to hell but they're not going to blow them to hell they're just going to blow them up and let them die for three and a half days then they're going to walk over there right when these drones take them out it looks like mobile fire is going to be doing it a drone and they're going to rejoice and pass gifts and go cut their heads off obama will be a tough guy he's he's a tough guy to corpses He won't do any hands-on, eye-to-eye combat. Hand-to-hand -hand combat. None of, nothing like that. He's too big of a wuss. He's a faggot. But he's a real tough guy down there with predator drones, pushing little buttons like a, you know, a 10-year-old on a video game. He can do that. And then he can go, you know, desecrate a corpse real good. And that's what he's going to be doing. Satan, Sean. Ambush. Revenge fire. I love it. Satan thinks he's going to get his revenge. And then these guys get their revenge and resurrecting and being raptured. Then they're going to get their revenge when they come back with Jesus on horses right next to Jesus. When Jesus says, kill these fools. And he's going to be staring right at the eyeballs of Jesus. Sean. And the other guy. <laughs> you talk about some revenge fire when Jesus says, okay, be destroyed. Boom. The Bible tells us fire is going to come down from heaven and consume them. Kill them. Lightning strikes. I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning, and I saw Obama get killed with lightning. And then Jesus go over there and just stomp all over his corpse. Jesus knows how to desecrate a corpse too. And say, to hell with you. I'm going to kill you. To hell. Die. Go to hell. Because... That's where these boys are going. And Jesus is going to have the ultimate revenge fire. Because he says, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. So we let him be our vengeance. And God uses Sean and the other guy to be God's vengeance for three and a half years. They'll be killing folk, man. They'll be stroking folk, calling down fire from heaven, lightning here, lightning there. Plagues here, plagues there. Floods here, floods there. Three and a half years. 
All right, let's look at another one, man. Praise God. This skip is negative 472, going upward like a rapture, 472. And remember that all of these are in chapter 11 of the book of Revelation. All right, make sure we got the right photograph here. We do. All right, bam. No, bam. All right, here we go. This is the one we're looking at now. Negative 472. 472. Boom, boom. Looks like we got some blue action, some pink action. I can't see that color right there. Is that a brown? We'll, we'll, we'll call it out here in a second. And then the red and the green verse going horizontal is the plain text. All right. What verse is that going to be in chapter 11? We're looking at codes from chapter 11 in Revelation. This is a skip of negative 472, the beheading. That's what you saw in those red letters. The beheading. Green, the two olive trees and the two lampstands. Brown, mobile shooting. Oh, there it is. He was discussing that with me. That's this code here, which sure sounds like a drone. Mobile shooting. Pink is lampstand. Blue is Sean. Let's do that without the color coding. Smoothly, this is all found, Revelation 11. And this skip is... Negative 472 going upwards in red says the beheading, the two olive trees and the two lampstands, mobile shooting, lampstand, Sean. Right there. All these guys, every one of these are found in chapter 11. Okay. For you to doubt the Bible code makes you the biggest idiot I've ever met. And you need to look in the mirror and say, I am the biggest idiot, absolute biggest retard I've ever met. Tell yourself that. And say, Lord, can you help me change and believe? Can you turn my unbelief into belief? Can you turn my retardation into wisdom? Can you turn my hard head into something that you can mold and I can trust in your helmet of salvation instead of my hard head? Can you soften up my neck and take away my stiff neckness? Can you have me advance forward and keep me from being a retarded backslider? Can you have me believe your codes, Lord? Please have me believe your codes. Have me believe everything that is truthful of you. And have me to know what I'm looking at and hearing when I hear it. Please, Lord. He'll answer your prayer and you'll fall in love with these Bible codes of Sean Mitchell and understand that they are the recorded word in heaven. We're just getting them here now. This has been in heaven until you heard it just now. Fresh manna, glory to God, holy fire, amen. Uh, will you believe that? Please believe that. Amen. All right. So that was that one. Boy, he's got a skinny dude here. Now, I don't know. Look at this one. This is a skinny little dude. Is it showing up even? Can you guys even see that? There we go. Boom, 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 boom. Seems to be a little too tall for my phone, but hopefully you got the idea there. That's a skinny dude, just too wide, right? Deep and wide. This one's narrow. The narrow road kind of narrow. All right. This one here is also at a negative going upward 101. All right. LOL. 101. And it says Mitchell. The red letters you saw going upward is Mitchell. The green is Sean. Pink reward. Uh-oh! Greg Jackson, somebody get him on the phone and tell him he's a fool! Because Christians get rewards. You and I will have gotten ours three and a half years before Sean gets his. He's going to go up. He'll be declared who he is. He's Moses. He's Elijah. But there's still work for him to do and rewards for him to receive later. And we're told this in the plain text. If you'll read chapter 11, you'll see that these guys finish their work and then they get rewarded by God. Okay? So here we got it in the plain text or the coded text here. Reward for the codes. He's going to be rewarded for the codes. There's still more codes to write. You guys remember that seventh thunder hadn't sounded yet, right? Aren't you blessed to have the six of them? Aren't you blessed to have these unpublished ones? I am. Praise God. I love meeting here every evening for this. To hear the word of God. 
gather around the Word of God. Did you guys see, I, I put up a bunch of posts today from old uh, photographs I had in my phone, old pictures I had in my phone. I just said, I just started going with them. And one of them is this old dog, man. There's two people sitting at this picnic table with him. And he's sitting there to the umbrella table, and he's just bored out of his gourd. And he's just kind of looking back, and it says, uh, this is kind of the way I am when people don't want to be in deep conversation about the Lord. I'm like, no kidding. That's me to a T, bro. <clears throat> I wonder what the seventh thunder will be about. Jesus Christ, the Word of God. That we do know. I wonder that too. It's going to be some good stuff. It's going to be some great stuff, bro. All right. Uh, so why don't we read that again? And uh, under reward, there's another note here. Under the word reward is verse 18. It says, And thou shouldest give a reward to thy servants, the prophets. Somebody tell Greg Jackson he's being the biggest fool and he is taking so many people down with him the wrong way. Okay, please. Arian says, I can relate. I like that post. Yeah, amen, sister. Praise God. I, I just, I'm like, are you kidding me? Christians! Christians talking about the race and this and that and the new house and the this and the that, the, the plans for the next 10 years, the plans for the next two years. I'm like, you idiot, you idiot, you idiot. But you can't say that. The word tells us to be patient with those who are lagging behind. We just preach to them. And when they go to say they hate the Bible, I don't fellowship with them. When they say they hate the Bible code, I don't fellowship with them. Because you're, you're that big of a fool and you don't know God. I'll love you. I'll be over here praying for you. But we're not going to hang out while you talk about car racing and football and, you know, the things that are going on in your miserable, mundane life. Because I don't care nothing about that. I want you to go to heaven and I want you growing and knowing it and sharing it with other people, man. Can we do that? That's why we share these codes every night. So you'll grow in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and share that with folks. Amen. All right. So let's read all that again smoothly. That, that, that was that real skinny one, dude. Okay, it's just only too wide, side by side. <clears throat> Man, I got something itching my throat. All right, it's been a, been a great day, praise God, amen. All right, so let's read that again. That was that skip of 101, negative 101, going upward. Mitchell, Sean, as in, you know, Sean Mitchell, reward for the codes Verse 18, and that thou shouldest give a reward to your servants and the prophets. God's going to give rewards to you and me, the servants and the prophets, because that's what we are, right? He's going to give it to Sean three years, three and a half years later, and the other guy, because they still had more work to do on earth. Praise God. Praise God. All right. Why don't we look at another one here? ELS is 243. Two, four, three. Can somebody bring up that number for me? Two, four, three. I forgot what that means. There is no comparison to the Thunders. What is there better to talk about? I love you guys for loving the Thunders alongside. Me too. Me too. Tyvon says amen. Amen. Oh, amen. I love these codes, man. Our God's a good God. And to share them with us, do you know how blessed you are on a Saturday night? You know, there's churches all over the world having their Saturday evening service. And it's just wasted vanity, garbage, refuse. They'll be blessed if they even get the word of God preached in context. But they're going to get together and they're going to sing a bunch of stupid songs uh, from NAR, N-A-R, and Word of Faith, and Elevation, and all that lying stuff. Uh, did y'all hear that? Watch your face. Are you ready? Are you ready for this? Are you ready? Are you ready for this? What's her name, dude? Real famous chick from um, Kansas City. Been having an affair with one of those preachers for years. Godly folk. She writes, led by the Spirit of God. Lying, lying. God's bringing everything to light, man. 
Oh, the truth shall sh set you free. Amen. Uh, the key is knowing the truth will set you free. The truth is there for everybody, and they're not free. They're bound. Truth doesn't set you free. You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Amen. No, this chick's a Christian, man. Uh, 243 is saints crowned with what? Rewards that they got, the five crowns, and God tells us how to get those five crowns. Misty Edwards. That's it. Misty Edwards from IHOP in Kansas City. Oh, going around with that big old hair about this high, just singing and praising the Lord. Oh, Lord, I'm in touch with you. Oh, oh we're following Holy Spirit here. And oh, man, are you ready? Are you ready for this? Are you ready? Are you ready for this? Are you ready? Are you ready for this? Yeah, I'm ready for you to tell the truth. I'm ready for you to get out of the ministry. I'm ready for you to go to hell already, you lying whore. I'm ready for that. I'm ready for God to judge you with the rest of your freaking empire of death. I'm ready for this. Amen? All right. Here's the next one. This Vondo has put up there, the saints crown, 243. Thank you, brother. 243, the saints crowned. You got to believe there's rewards. This is our God. He's going to give you the grace gifts, which is to everybody. Uh, we're all on the same level. We're the bride of Christ, man. He loves us all. We're, he's going to reward us all the same. And then there's something special promised to those that love him back. In several places in scripture, there's talking about the blessings, the extra blessings for those that love him back. <laughs> Be one of those. Just love him back already, will you? Love our Lord. All right, with that photograph we saw, it says it's at that skip of 243, so it's going downward. That's that red you saw. Obama's way. The green is Barack, and it joins right to Obama. Blue, the shooter. Pink, the lamps. Brown, the enemy beheaded. Dark blue, Sean. Okay, so let's read all that, and then we'll read that verse that goes through there. It's going to be verse 7 is the one we're looking at in this code. That's that green you saw going across there. All right. This says, Obama's way, Barack, Barack Obama's way. The shooter, the lamps, the enemy beheaded, Sean. Barack Obama's enemy is Sean and the other guy. And God's going to allow them to be taken out with that drone fire, the mobile fire, the mobile shooting. And Barack is the shooter, the lamps. You're going to make sure he can really push a button at a distance. Did you guys see that drone killing that... Um, I don't know, guys, I don't know if it was a Russian being killed or a Ukrainian being killed. But his, his tank had been blown up, and then there's a drone sitting up here looking at him, recording him, and he calls in another drone, and the drone chases him out from underneath his tank. He runs around his tank, and boom, the drone, drone catches up with him and blows him to heck. That's what Obama's going to do. He didn't see one human in sight anywhere except the deceased. And Sean and the other guy, they'll be in their location, expected location, when they're taken out. And Barack Obama is the guy doing this. And what was that number, Vondo? Oh, man. Uh, Saints crowned. They go down, and then they get crowned after three and a half days when they raise from the dead. Their story boards over for their ministry. That three and a half year ministry that we all knew about and everybody's known about for 1,993 years. Actually, 1926. Book of Revelation was completed 1,926 years before the book was published in 22. And we've known about it in the plain text. God has been so gracious to us to let us know the story. And now's the time. The saints will be crowned. Now, I want you to understand God and he's marking this. We just learned about the crowns. They're going to get their crowns after their mission. They get their crowns three and a half years after us. And the saints crown. Do you think these guys are saints? Yeah, I do too. They're going to get their crowns. And it has to take place after they are gunned down and beheaded by one Barack Obama. Barack Obama, the shooter. The lamps, 
the enemy beheaded, Sean. And verse 7 says, And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. I love it. You want to look at another one? Let's look at another one. Praise God. Boom. Here's the other one. All these are from Revelation chapter 11 concerning the two witnesses of God. Sean is one of them. God has been so gracious enough to us to allow us to know this. And now we're looking at perfected Bible codes on them. This is at a skip of 467. 467. Boom, 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 boom. 467. It says this. Mitchell is a light. The dark blue is Sean. The blue is he decoded. Pink, my writing. Brown, a jigsaw puzzle. Without the colors. Mitchell is a light. Sean. Sean Mitchell is a light. He decoded my writing. A jigsaw puzzle. I love it! A riddle. A jigsaw puzzle. This ain't the first time we've seen jigsaw puzzle. God has shared that with us before. Concerning his Bible code. And stick around, folks. All the pieces are put together. And you're going to see this thing come together, baby. And we've, we've seen it pretty much come together, haven't we? Six thunders later, 777 pages, 400 and whatever, 63 codes, whatever that number was last night. Amen. Here's the verse that goes right through it. Well, no, no, there, there's the green line. It says, the two olive trees and the two candlesticks. I want to go over all that again. 467. Sean Mitchell is a light. He decoded my writing, a jigsaw puzzle, the two olive trees and the two candlesticks. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. What do you think about those codes, guys? Amen. Oh, truth sets you free when you know it. That's what it is. You got to know it. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Uh, you can have the same Bible in your house next to your spouse, and your spouse can be an unbelieving, world-loving, earth-hugging, you know, grabbing of things person. You got the same Bible, the same truth in the house. But you're the one who not only knows the information, oh, yeah, yeah, I know that's in the Bible, but you believe it unto the personal expression of knowing Jesus, that I might know him. Truth, knowing the truth. You shall know Jesus, and Jesus will set you free. Through his word, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free by knowing it, by having a personal relationship with him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Knowing it. Amen. Praise God. Uh, he's got a couple notes here. Th these words and these numbers, when you put it into the Gematria counter, Bible codes unsealed by Moses Mitchell is a total in Hebrew Gematria of 1417. 1,417. Now, I like 14, and I like 17, and I like 417, and I like one. One is God. One is God, and one is you and I being one with God. 417 is when Jesus was crucified, the day of Passover, A.D. 30, on the Julian calendar. I like that. I like that 14 being rapture and 17 being victory. And there's all that in Bible Codes Unsealed by Moses Mitchell. Then we got Bible Codes Unsealed by Moses Mitchell in English Gematria, which is 2022. That's when Vondo got with him and said, hey, let's do a book. And the Lord put it on his heart and said, yeah, let's do that book. 2022 was the first time it was published for us to download. And then Bible Codes Unsealed by Moses Mitchell in Simple Gematria is 337. Vondo, what is 337? Three, three, seven. I like that three there. That is in the yoke with the Lord, you and I. And, uh, you know, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, they're together as one, unified as one, yoked. And you and I are yoked to them in belief. And the Holy Spirit of God comes inside of us, and we're yoked with him in three. And then you got your 33. That's when Jesus died. And then seven is perfection, completed perfection in our Lord Jesus Christ. Is there a three, three, seven? All right, uh, Rex shares with this guy. Check this out. PDF 1417 is on his license plate. 
<laughs> I love it. I love it. PDF 1417 is Rex's license plate. I know Sean will get a tickle out of that. Praise God, brother. Amen. Our, our Texas connection, one of the many. Amen. I love you guys. Um, why don't we call it a night? What's some great, great, great uh, codes we got tonight in one little chapter? There ain't nothing about little in the Bible. Jesus wept. The shortest verse in the Bible is one of the most powerful detonators. Backsliders swallowed. It's 337. Thanks, Bondo. Backsliders swallowed. Don't be a backslider, man. These words will take you out. These, the, the more of the Bible code that you hear and refuse, you're going to be swallowed up. You're a backslider if you refuse these Bible codes. You're, you're not advancing in the kingdom of heaven. You're going backwards from God and knowing him. You had the 66, and I'm not even sure that you read the 66. You'll claim it on the, on the groups and then on Facebook. Oh, the Bible 66. And I had a, one of our ladies at Bible classes do you have to preach from these codes? Isn't preaching from the 66 enough? Well, yeah, if you want to backslide, if you don't want to grow in truth, if you don't want to know the heart of God that he desires for you to know now with greater detail and advancement. Otherwise, the backsliders are going to be swallowed up. Great number, guys. And what does it say? Bible codes unsealed by Sean Mitchell. And if you don't go for that, you're a backslider and you're about to be swallowed up, man. Thanks, Bono. That's great. Uh, Alicia says, thankful for the 2022 Bible code book. What a blessing and a priceless treasure. It, aren't we blessed? The, ain't this great? Share it out, guys. Share it out, share it out, share it out. Now, these are unpublished codes we shared tonight. That's just for the hearers. That's for the hearers. And I'm going to encourage you to take it from being a hearer to being a doer. Whatever the Lord taught you tonight, whatever he shared with you, take it into heart and just advance with it. Don't backslide. Don't refuse what you've learned tonight. Don't roll your eyes at what you heard tonight. Go with God on this. Go with God on this. This is just one chapter in the Bible decoded. What a blessing it is to us. Amen. Amen. I love you. Let's pray. Oh, Papa, we love you. Thank you for loving us, taking care of us, watching over us. And uh, this whole time change ritual that's coming up. I just pray you'll keep us out of every bit of that. And we'll just be looking for you. We'll have our heads up looking for you to come at any moment. And we praise you. We glorify you. Thank you for Sean. Thank you for putting these words into him and directing him in these codes, what to look for next. And I pray you just keep on doing that, Lord. Keep on doing that. And getting us the word in our hearts that we need for our encouragement, your edification, your glory. And I, I pray that people will come on board instead of jumping off the hay bale. And I, I pray that they'll just get it right with you, Lord, and, and enter heaven with victory and rewards in hand because they believed and help us all to, to be that way. Thank you for everybody here. Bless them. Bless our families as we just continue to take each step for your glory. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Hey, guys, don't forget about your whole clock thing. All you Americans and people in North America, they're going to speed up our clocks tonight. And... uh what a satanic ritual. But here we are Ooh, in Gregorian's calendar. Believers have been waiting for the little book so long. We are so unbelievably blessed to lay our eyes on it. Amen. Amen. Praise God, says George. Thank you, Pastor and Sean. What a blessing you both are. Amen. In Jesus' holy name, amen, amen, amen. Amen, guys. I love you. By God's grace, we'll see you in the morning. And don't forget about that whole clock thing. God bless.